Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Let me know if you're here. Oh, I have a thumbs up button already, and I'm loving that. So let me know that you are here. Um, I'm waiting for it to come up on mine. I love that you're here. We're going to be starting in about one minute. And hopefully, that'll be awesome. Okay, well, we're live streaming, and that's all I care. Hi, Boo. How are you? Let me know if you hear me okay. Oh, fabulous. Thanks so much, Boo. Um, you always are right there. You're my rock. I'm loving that. And I hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to talk about food swaps. Hi, Richard. How are you? So glad you're joining me tonight. This is just awesome. Um, this is what makes the live stream is you all being here. And Angela, wow, how are you? I miss you too. Oh, this is fabulous. So good. I'm going to talk about food swaps tonight, and I hope that helps all of you. Wow. Hi, Janice. This is beyond. I, one of the best parts of this is staying in touch with all of you. It is seven o'clock. And so, as you know, I like to start on time, but I'm so thrilled that I'm having such wonderful people already joining me on the live stream. So happy to have all of you. Thank you for joining me today. I thought we would talk about food swaps. The holidays are behind us. It's time to move forward um, and how to have some of your favorite foods by making substitutions that are either more heart healthy and also perhaps therefore lower in saturated fat, lower in sodium, lower in added sugar, and also maybe lower in calories. Hi, Mary Ellen. I'm so thrilled you're joining me. You guys are awesome. It's like this makes this all worthwhile is when you're all here. The beauty of the live stream, as many of you know, is having all of you people on the live stream because it enriches the discussion. So I'm so thrilled um, to have you here and think about things that you're doing that are helping you to stay on track and any substitutions you have been making. And I'm going to share with you some of my favorites as well. For those of you who are watching their weight, it's 3,500 calories in a pound. So in other words, in order for you to cut, uh, to, to lose a pound a week, you have to cut 500 calories every day. So I'm going to show you how to do that without really sacrificing at all and having foods that are delicious. But just by being a little bit more mindful and making some of these substitutions, we can all get to our goals. Let's make 2020 a healthy year. So here's to you. What makes me in a position to be able to do this with you? Well, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. I am more than delighted for you to join me here on Dishing with the Dietitian. My name is Debbie. I've been a registered dietitian for over 30 years. Currently, I'm a clinical dietitian at the Massachusetts General Hospital Cardiovascular Disease Prevention Center. I also have a private practice. I consult with many corporations. I've appeared in national publications such as Harper's Bazaar, Family Circle Magazine. I've also contributed to a book written by cardiologists from Mass General on a heart disease called Facing Heart Disease. And I have appeared in television. It gives me my greatest joy and pleasure to be able to help you to reach your dietary goals. So together, we will shop, we will cook, and I will navigate the way. Let's get started. Food swaps, really great to do. It's unbelievable when you do them. Think about if you've been making any of them because you can't believe you didn't do it before and how great it is. Um, sometimes they actually taste better than their higher calorie or higher fat uh, replacement. So I thought that maybe a logical way for us to do this so we're not so overwhelmed because there are so many of them is to go through the day, to start with breakfast and work our way through. Let me know if that works for you. So let's start with breakfast. Many people have eggs in the morning. Think about as you're making swaps, what is something that will be not only help you to get to your goals, but by doing so will also be satisfying to you. There are certain swaps that are great to make. But for me, frankly, they don't work because they don't hit the note. They just don't give me that joy and pleasure that I get from um, from a different from the whole fat item. 
in that case, it's better for someone like me to have the whole fat item versus the other. But if you can go the other way, I would definitely suggest doing it. An example, whole egg versus egg whites. Let me know if you eat egg whites. There are many friends of mine who do, and I think that is fabulous. My daughter has egg whites all the time, loves them. For me, it just doesn't work. So think about you and where you are, what makes you satisfied and happy, because if you're not satisfied, you're going to keep grazing and looking for other things, and that'll end up costing you more in terms of calories and, and so on in the end. So if you can go eggs versus egg whites, let me show you the difference for calories. A whole, I use extra large eggs. So an extra large egg is going to be about 70 calories and it'll give me seven grams of protein. If only I could switch to the egg white, the same one egg white from an extra large egg is only 20 calories. So say you need two egg whites to be able to stay on track. It's 40 calories versus 140. And that's a big difference in savings. Um, I'm saving close to 100 calories, and that's just from the eggs, and I haven't moved even on from there. So let me know. Are you eating egg whites, egg beaters, or are you more like me and you need to have the whole egg? If you're like me and you need to have the whole egg, displace them with a lot of vegetables because that's the trick is if you displace a higher calorie item with foods that have more fiber and low in calories – then you're going to get more food for less. So if I add some onions and tomatoes and peppers, I'm good to go. If you like mushrooms, add mushrooms. So Angela, you're having egg beaters and you add veggies. So that's a double win for you because you're doing both things. So that's oh, no wonder you're, you're doing so great. F many people like to have cheese with their eggs. Let me know if that's you. I personally can go without the cheese, but Many love the cheese. If I was to add um, to a quarter of a cup of the Sargento ch shredded cheddar jack, that's 110 calories, five grams of saturated fat. But instead, if I had put um, some Baby Bell light cheese, it would give me that same melting. It'll feel like mozzarella cheese, and I go down to 50. I'm going to save... Um, Hi, Stein. Hi, how are you? There is such, this is such an important for fearing the egg. Yeah. So let me go, I'll go back to the egg in just one minute. But if you're adding cheese, let me just give you a couple of options. If you were to do a Sargento shredded cheese, it's 110. If I went to um, Baby Bell, I'm at 50. So I have saved clo close to 100 calories. And that's just from the cheese. If you are vegan, there is, or even if you're not, uh, Bragg's has a nutritional yeast. A tablespoon is only 20 calories. So you could go from 110 calories down to 20 calories and it tastes exactly like cheese. For someone like me, I can leave the cheese out and go to 140. So if I had two eggs with my cheese, um, I'm going to be 140 and 110 is um, 250 calories. If instead I went to two eggs and um, baby bell cheese, I go to 140 and 50 is 190 calories instead of the 240. And if I did baby brags, I'd go to 160. So any combination of that would work. For me, I can even just do chives and keep me at 140. But let me know what your, your combination is. If you did egg whites with all of that, you go even further. You go from 40 and 50 from the baby bell is 100, 40 and 50 is 90, or you could go with the um, nutritional yeast with 40 and 20, 60. How awesome is that? In terms of the, the, um, the egg, many people are very afraid of having a whole egg. The issue with the yolk of the egg, the yellow part of the egg, is the dietary cholesterol. For most people, I don't think you'll eat enough dietary cholesterol to have it have a negative impact. It's not that cholesterol is not important. It's just that I'm not sure you're going to eat enough to make a difference. But if, if you have a genetic predisposition to heart disease, if your cholesterol is, your total cholesterol is high before you needed a, um, a statin, then you might be genetically very efficient at extracting that cholesterol from the foods that you're eating. If this is you, then I wouldn't have um, I wouldn't have six, a half a dozen eggs every week. I would keep it to no more than one whole egg and maybe take 
one whole egg and mix it with egg whites and have no more than three whole eggs in a week. Charlene, oh my gosh, miss your guts. Oh, I am so glad you are here. Running to yoga, I will catch you later. You can catch me as part of the library, but thanks so much for stopping and saying hi. Oh my gosh, I miss you like crazy as well. So that is the best part of these live streams is I get to connect with people who have uh, who are no longer, I don't see regularly all the time. And that that is wonderful. So let me know whatever combination that you're going to. And then how are you cooking your eggs? If you're cooking them in butter, you're cooking them in saturated fat, not to mention the calories, about 100 calories uh, per serving. If you did a tablespoon of oil, you have a healthier fat as long as it's not coconut or palm oil, but you are now at 120 calories. If I sprayed this pan with Pam, I got rid of all those fat calories totally. And that's a big difference. If I, um, if I hard boiled it or I poached it, I got rid of the fat calories as well. So just keep in mind, where are these calories coming from? Because that's going to make a big difference and they're going to add up fast. And at the end of the day, it's a calorie game. But I hope Steinler Consulting that I have um, answered your question about, about eggs and that you definitely, they are a great high quality protein, easy to use. Um, if you love hard boiled eggs, you could always just eat the whites, but you could eat the whole egg. If, if you have a genetic history, no more than one whole egg in a day, no more than three in a week. But for the rest of us, um, even those with heart disease, I don't think you'll eat enough. I think you could have two eggs two or three times a week and you would be totally fine. So I hope those guidelines are helpful. My pleasure. Hi, Janice. How are you? I'm so glad you guys are here. I thought that was you. I just didn't want to, um, but I'm, I'm glad that you love the explanation and that you found it helpful. And thank you for joining me tonight. I'm thrilled to have you. Then the question is, Many times people love toast in the morning. It's good to have whole grains in the morning um, or at any time of the day. You want all of your carbohydrate sources to be high in fiber and or whole grain. So if you were to have um, Dave's Killer Bread, they come at about a hundred, about uh, seventy cal. 90 calories a slice, or if you got, or 140 calories a slice. If you go to their thin slice bread, it's only 70 calories a slice. So you could get two slices for 140, same calories about as if you got one slice. If you had, just to give you an example, a far reaching example, but nonetheless, the Cinnabon classic cinnamon rolls. Anybody ever wonder about those? They are 880 calories. And you're ready for this. Hold on to your, your fillings. 15 teaspoons of added sugar. Ay, ay, ay. Um, not to mention 820 milligrams of sodium. That's about half a day for most people. And you just had the roll. Two grams is what we're looking for for saturated fat. This Cinnabon Classic has um, 17 grams of saturated fat. Instead, if I went with the Dave's whole wheat bread, the Dave's killer bread, I'm going to go down to about eight grams of whole grain for the thin slice. And um, I would get for, for this particular substitution, instead of the Cinnabon classic, I might get Dave's raise the roof whole wheat raisin bread just to give me that kind of feeling of a treat and a little indulgence. Each slice is 90 calories. Each slice will give me half a serving of whole grain, eight grams, 16 or a serving. Each slice here gives me half a slice, eight grams, a little bit of fiber at two grams, very low in sodium at 95 milligrams and three grams of added sugar, which is less than a teaspoon. So that'd be a much better choice. And I could put laughing cow cheese on it because for me, it would taste like cream cheese on top of my raisin bread, mimicking a Cinnabon classic roll. Would it be the same? No, but frankly, I don't want the same. I don't know how about you, but after I eat something very rich like that, very greasy and heavy, I feel heavy and I just don't feel good. And I know I didn't give myself good, clean fuel. So I just as soon have this kind of a treat, a whole wheat raisin toast with laughing cow cheese. And I'm going to feel indulged, like I had something that was indulgent and I'll feel really um, yummy. And I didn't sabotage my goals in any way. Let me know if that kind of a thing works for you. Where it is a calorie game at the end of the day, if I get a bagel, even if it's a whole wheat bagel, it's still a calorie game. It's about three, 400 calories, depending on where I'm getting it. If instead I had a whole wheat muffin, whole wheat English muffin, I go down to 140. Now, 
um, Thomas's has these multigrain English muffins. I'm going to show you them here. This is only 100 calories. So I get a whole English muffin, 100 calories. Is this a whole grain? No, it is not. But that's okay. It, it'll give me, just so you know, that the label shows that it gives me 8 grams of fiber. So 5 is high fiber. So at 8 grams, this is very high in fiber. I'm just going to complement it with it doesn't have, which is whole grains. So through the course of the day, I'm going to have more whole grains. Maybe I'll do it in the form of popcorn. Maybe I'll do it in the form of brown rice or whole wheat bread for a sandwich at lunch, whatever. But this would be 100 calories. It's a great choice. I might make an egg sandwich, like an egg McMuffin with baby bell cheese in my egg. Let me know how that sounds. And you love these. Oh, go Angela. You're doing great. So Angela, you could do these with egg beaters and the veggies, and that would be scrumptious. If you sprayed this with spray butter, you're going to cut 100 calories and cut all the saturated fat. So these are my two spray butters. They're found right in the refrigerator section, right where your butters and spreads are. And you're going to go down to less than a calorie spray. This is just a great way to not sacrifice taste and to still get the flavor of butter and, um, and not clog your arteries either. So let me know if any of you are using spray butter. I use it on so many things from a baked potato to toast to, um, to popcorn. And it's awesome. Let me know about you. Let me know how you're doing. Um, if we kept going and we had fruit, just to know that fruit that's calorie dense, it's not that it's bad for you. It's fine. You can totally have it. But just to give you an example, if I had three and a half ounces of craisins, which isn't a lot, it's 352 calories. If I did the same thing in grapes, I go down to 69. So that's a huge difference. Go with foods. If you're like me, you're a volume eater. Let me know. Are you a volume eater? Do you love food? Do you love to eat? So I'd love to eat. I use it on all, you use the spray butter on your veggies. It's yummy, yummy, yummy. Huh? I'm so glad, Rich, that you're loving it um, and that you're enjoying it. It's great. So um, spray butter is my go-to. In terms of fruit, fruit that's calorie dense, a little bit gives you a lot of calories, will be pears, will be bananas, mangoes, dried fruit like the craisins. In contrast, watermelon, like its namesake, loaded with water, any of the melons, any of the berries, peaches, plums, um, apples, oranges, grapes, that's what you're looking for because you're going to get more for less. Many people freeze their grapes. It's a dessert. It's yummy. Um, but about 17 grapes are a serving. There are two calories in every grape. I mean, how do you beat that? You just can't. But just to give you an example of caloric density, I've done it before, but just to show you, this is about 60 calories worth of a banana. One and a quarter cup strawberries are 60 calories. You're going to be satisfied after you eat one and a quarter cup strawberries. You're going to go 120, 180 calories before you think you ate a banana. It is a calorie game. Go where you get more food for less. That's how you're going to stay on track. So even things like if you were going to have a drink, um, get a coffee. Don't look at Star. I mean, watch out. You can see that I don't work for any companies. Starbucks. Um, you know, some of these lattes, these macchiato, uh, frappuccinos, they can be 500, 600 calories. Instead, coffee should be coffee with skim milk or an artificial sweetener if you need. And that will keep you at about 5, 10 calories. Big difference. Williams Sonoma, their hot chocolate. I was just reading their label. 210 calories if you take their mix. Um, just the dry mix alone. If I mix this with milk, I'm at 360 calories. And just so you know, I will be at 11 grams of saturated fat, not the two I was looking for. And also it will give me um, 21 grams of added sugar. So that's about a little over five teaspoons of added sugar every time I have a cup of this. If instead I substituted Swiss Miss reduced calorie hot chocolate because it's cold out and sometimes you love a treat. And I don't know if any of you love chocolate. I love chocolate. Um, this takes me down from 360. I go down to 35 calories and, uh, and no added sugar. So big, big difference and no saturated fat. Is it the same? No. Does it do the trick? Absolutely. So this for me makes me happy. 
the egg white didn't. So go for where you find that you're satisfied and you can stay on track. You're going to find that there's no rights or wrongs. It's what helps you to be consistent and stay on course most of, most of the time. Um, watch when you're making, um, when you're making sandwiches and things and you're having lunch, watch your condiments. A tablespoon of Hellman's mayonnaise will be about 90 calories. Not bad if you want it, but if you could substitute mustard, you go down to nothing. So 90 calories saved right there. Find where it makes you happy for that. I can do that any day of the week, but for some people, it just won't work. I love to find nice surprises. I use, this is Legal Seafood's house vinaigrette. You can get it at Legal's, but you can also get this at Stop and Shop. How awesome is that? And they sell their vinaigrette. It, the two tablespoons is their suggested serving, but when you read labels, make sure you do so with a level playing field. Many salad dressings, salad dressings are listed in one tablespoon. So be mindful of that so you're comparing things with like units of measure. So this is going to be 50 calories a tablespoon or 100 for the two tablespoons, and it's low in everything. So it's a great choice. It tastes delicious. If I'm having something like halibut filet or halibut steak, I will put this on that halibut and broil it or grill it. That might be my dinner tonight. And it's also delicious on salads. So just to show you something different. And in terms of fish preparation and marinades, um, what's sweeter what sweetener? Do you know what? There was, no, I know, Janice, hi. I was wondering the same thing when I was reading the label, and it's made with a little Splenda. So be careful. If, if that bothers you, don't use it. You could take I, just a cocoa powder and add milk, um, but I think that's a little bitter. This is made with a little bit of Splenda. So find that balance for you. Are the artificial sweeteners perfect? No, they are not, but I do know what sugar does. So a little bit, I'm okay with it. But if it doesn't work for you, then this would not work. Then this might not be a good option. So I'm just trying to show you different things. Let me know what works for you and what doesn't. Um, but I'm so glad you guys are on. It's awesome. It's so good. Um, for for the cheeses, just to show you, for those of you who don't know what it looks like, this is the Laughing Cow Cheese. My, I love the garlic and herb. I use it in salads. I use it anywhere. I'll use it in pastas. I'll use it everywhere. It comes in many, many flavors. I actually think the um, queso fresco chipotle is a great substitute for cream cheese. Let me know if you've had that one. Many times if you can't find the different flavors in your local market, and these are sold in every single market, uh, but sometimes they don't have a great selection of flavors, then like everything, go on Amazon. They're happy to deliver to you, um, and they make it, and, and it's wonderful. If you are having potatoes and you want to top them with sour cream or you want to do a dip. Oh, you're welcome, Janice. Um, I love to substitute the Faye Zero. Let me tell, let me know if any of you are using Faye Zero. This is my gold star for yogurts because it has the most protein and here no artificial anything. But because it tastes like sour cream, it's very rich, it's very thick and creamy and satisfying. So many times I'll grate I'll grate an a garlic clove into it. I'll add chives and scallions and I'll use it as a topping for a baked potato. It is amazing. I may also make a dip with it by adding a splash of sour cream and a little um, mayonnaise. That recipe is on my Facebook page of Dishing with a Dietitian. And if you do try it, let me know if you like it. For any of you who happen to be meeting with me on Friday, this Friday at Mass General, you will get the dip. So um, you'll let me know what you think. You'll get to taste it. But I do love hummus. It's not that hummus isn't bad for you. It's fine for you. It's great. This is the Sabra roasted red pepper. And two tablespoons are 70 calories. Here it is, upside down and right side up. How do you like that? But if I'm watching my weight, frankly, I'd rather cut the calories and go with salsa for 10. So they're both good choices. Go with which one satisfies you and helps you to stay on track. And it depends on what your goals are. For me watching my weight, this is a lower calorie option. I'm going to go here. And then what about those? Um, and let me also show you one more thing. I, that if I was to have sour cream, I'm at 60 calories and three and a half 
grams of saturated fat. If I was to go to, um, I can't compare the price. This is going to be, this Faye Zero is much, much, much lower in calories. I mean, significantly lower in calories because one cup, for those of you who are good in math on the fly, and I can't say that would be me, it's 90 calories a cup. And so um, I'm going to let all of you guys with calculators go figure that out for me. But um, two tablespoons is going to be 60 for sour cream and much, much less here. Talking about the tortilla chips, read the labels. They tell you a lot. So here is, a, sounds like a very appealing option. This is the Tostitos, lightly salted. They're yummy. They're delicious. But you only get seven chips for 140 calories. Okay? Now, for the similar low-calorie option, low-sodium option, um, these are the organic from Trader Joe's corn tortillas, as you know, um, this this is not whole grain because it doesn't say whole corn, but it does give me um, some moderately high fiber. It is very low in sodium at 65 milligrams. And my serving size for the same 140 calories is double. I get 14 chips instead of, um, instead of the seven. So I like to go with more for less. I'm going with these. Now, if I really want to kick it up a notch, here's what I do. And maybe you'll try this too. This is Joseph's whole wheat pita pocket. You can see I've already cut it up because I do this all the time at home. Let me know if this sounds good to you. So you take the pocket bread. Let me see if I left one whole. I did to show you. So you take this pocket bread. This is the whole pocket bread. Look at this size, this whole thing, the entire pocket bread, 60 calories. How do you beat that? So if I'm going to have a sandwich, I might do it in this. I could eat both halves for 60. That's pretty awesome. Or just cut the top off and eat it as one big one. And um, I might put the baby bell cheese in here and make a grilled cheese. Yum. Or put some lettuce and all kinds of vegetables and turkey or tuna. Uh, and if you like sardines, you could do sardines. But um, for me, I will cut this around, cut in the middle so that you have two flats and then cut it in half and in half and in half. And what you're going to end up with are these triangles and you'll get about, oh, you'll get about 16 triangles. At least you can get more, but for 16 pita chips, instead of 140 calories, which was my cheaper calorie version from Trader Joe's, I now went down to 60. I'm going to take these triangles and put them on a cookie sheet for just about five, three, maybe five minutes until they crisp. And when they come out, I'm going to spray them with the spray butter. And then I am going to sprinkle them because that spray butter will act like a glue. And I am going to sprinkle them with Trader Joe's everything but the bagel sesame seasoning. And that's going to give me incredible flavor so that then when I have my salsa instead of my um, hummus, it will really make this very delicious and very satisfying and will help to keep me on track. You use yogurt for the cream cheese. Yeah, that's a great idea, as well as for sour cream and yogurt. It's awesome. Go you, Janice. Um, that's why you're doing so well. These are the things. And the thing is so great when you guys are writing in with what you're doing, it takes a village that we're all trying to be healthy. We're all walking the walk. So your ideas help everybody. I love, see, those ideas are great. It's just what, it's just what you want to do. Now let's keep, if we were to keep going and many of us are having problems with regular soda, diet soda, and what should we do? Regular soda, a small 12-ounce can of Coke, 140 calories, and, and, and loaded with added sugar. Diet soda, we go down to no calories, but still the issue is the phosphorus as well as the artificial sweetener. Instead, a great substitution is mineral water. I don't know if any of you are drinking mineral water, but it's fabulous. Do I bake them or broil? I bake them 350, Richard, for just about three to five minutes. And in terms of skinny pop popcorn, um, Angela, I like it. But if you have a big bag, I don't know about you, but if 
I open a big bag. If it's there, I eat it. And if I eat this whole bag, I'm at about 700 calories and that is not getting me anywhere near where I want to go. So buy the 100 calorie pre-portioned bags. Otherwise, make sure that you pop your own. And to give you an idea of some snack ideas, um, oh, here's the Baby Bell light cheese. I just want to stop for a second because it caught my eye. Excuse me, I've showed you before. This is the Baby Bell. Make sure it says light. The regular and light look identical. So make sure you get the light. Look at this. This is the calories and 150 calories worth of potato chips. Not bad. Potato chips aren't bad. Just read the sodium, but not bad. These happen to be Lay's 50% less sodium. And that's what you get. I weighed them out on my food scale to make sure I was accurate. And this is what you get for 150 calories. But if I was to pop my own popcorn, if you follow the fat, you're going to follow the calories. So it might be low in sodium. It's not lower in fat. So if I would pop my own, look at how much popcorn I'm going to get for 80 calories. Half the calories, much more food. What I do is I take a brown paper lunch bag. I take the dry kernels and I pour those kernels into the bottom of the lunch bag, just enough to barely cover the bottom. Do a scant layer. If you do more than one layer, they burn. Two tablespoons kernels pop up to seven cups of pop popcorn. It's incredible. So just a little bit. Fold your ba paper bag over twice and put it in the microwave. It's going to pop up in the bag without any fat. We cut those fat calories. Don't walk away. When it slows down, take it out. Now, I have a popcorn sensor in my microwave. Many now have a popcorn button on your on their microwaves. Let me see, take a look at yours because um, my daughter didn't realize I had it till she was over and she said, oh, look at that. That's amazing. So, but even with that, when it, it slowed down, I had to take it out about 10 seconds before it was ready to quit. So just don't walk away. When it slows down, take it out. Otherwise, they do burn. And then you could spray it with spray butter. And you've got a whole grain, high fiber, fat-free snack, much more food than I would have had in the popcorn, in the potato chips. And many people don't take the time to weigh out those potato chips the way I did. They're going to eat out of the bag, and then you have no idea what you just ate. So make sure that you you when you buy a big bag that you pre-portion them in Ziploc bags so that when you take the bag, when it's empty, you're done. Your serving size is done. So either buy them pre-portioned or, um, or do it yourself, but make sure you do. Don't eat out of a big bag because you're not going to have any clue what you just ate and you're going to eat more than you think you ate. And you want to have a realistic understanding of why it is you are and not getting to your goals. Let me know how you're doing with big bags. Um, and if it's making a difference for you, these are relatively new to the market. I got them at whole foods. They are Quinn, um, whole grain pretzels. Now there is a company called mighty mill, one mighty mill, and they have whole wheat pretzels, but they're way too high in sodium. I have told the company to reduce the sodium. We'll wait and see. These are still a little high in sodium, but less than the One Mighty Mill. If you need the crunch from a pretzel, these are the way I'd go. They're 230 milligrams of sodium, a little high. You can go to about 200, 230 is a little over, but just keep the rest of your day um, low and you're, you're fine. And these are made from whole grain. The first ingredient is whole grain and they, they're yummy. And you get 17 pretzels for 110 calories. So it, they're terrific. When I find something I like, I like to share it with you. If we're talking about snack foods, cookies. I don't know about you. I love cookies. Sometimes I just need something sweet and crunch. To give you an idea of the swap, Mrs. Fields chocolate chip cookies, 140 calories for one cookie. If instead I went down to Irene's biscotti, here's what they look like. 20 calories each. This is the raisin. They come in cranberry. They come in chocolate almond, vanilla pistachio, banana bread, apple cinnamon. This is the raisin, 20 calories each. They're amazing. Um, they are made with egg whites, a little bit of sugar, and, um, and some raisins and some almonds, lemon powder, vanilla extract. That's what's in this for 10 cal, for, excuse me, for for 20 calories each, it just gives me sweet and crunch. This and a cup of tea can get me through the night. I also love um, ice cream. I don't know about you, but that's my my little weak link. 
And um, if I going to have ice cream, I love enlightened. So I'm going to show you one ice cream. One of the part, parts about this live stream is that I can't move with you until I get to a thousand subscribers. So if this interests anybody, please, if you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button. But let me show you what I found. So this is Enlighten. I want to show you this. This is their movie theater or movie night flavor. And the movie night flavor is popcorn ice cream with chocolate bits and swirls of caramel. Now, who would think that that'd be okay to have? But indeed, how awesome it is. Half a cup, 90 calories, low in sodium, two grams of saturated fat. And um, here we go. I just wanted to show you. I did a little taste testing because I wanted to show you and see if it would be good if you think you might like this. And just to show you, you're supposed to let this rest. So I'm going to let it rest to do them to do it a service, but you're going to see it looks amazing. You get the crunch and the sweet and the smooth, and it's unbelievable. My son has already eyed this and has put his name all over it. You also could get Enlightened comes not only in the pints, because I know he's going to eat this whole thing, um, but also it comes in bars. And I like the bars, definitely. Do I measure that out before eating? Always, always. I, I Richard, I measure everything, because we, it doesn't matter how well-educated you are, we're terrible at judging portion sizes, and it makes a huge difference. Remember, serving size versus portion. So the portions, how much you take, and it makes it a new company that spun out of the Freedom School of Nutrition has introduced an oat-based ice cream. It's delicious, and um, and also for those healthy for those who have some lactose issues as well. And what's the name of it, and where do we get it? Thanks. Oh, I'm curious to hear. So that'd be interesting because ice cream is my favorite. I also do recommend getting these ice creams in bar form. If you think that if once you take the lid off, you're going to eat the pint, then definitely do what I really usually do. It's just this flavor was so intriguing to me. And I wanted to show you guys on the live stream because there are four calories here. If I eat this whole pint, I ate 360 calories. If Instead, I get the bars. I go down to anywhere between 90 and 100, and I just as soon stay at 90 and 100 and know when my bar is done, I'm done. And it really makes me feel I've had something rich and creamy and satisfying and, again, indulgent without having sabotaged my goals. If I really need to cut back calories and need just a little sweet, I might have Popsicle brand sugar-free Popsicle for only 15 calories or their fudgical for 40. So depending on where you're at, you know, at different times you feel differently and you you might need different things. So, so be mindful. In terms of condiments, let me know if this has been helping you guys. Um, in terms of condiments, uh, my family loves hot sauce. And so this is, you can read them. They vary a little bit. This is sriracha chili sauce at 190 milligrams of sodium. That's still low sodium. But this one um, happens to be only 75. So if you can cut the sodium, I cut the sodium. But if you like that taste better, then um, go with the one that you like. But watch something like this. If you were to do, this is um, oyster sauce. Oyster sauce used a lot in um, stir fry. This is for one tablespoon. 980 milligrams. That's a far cry from the 140 to 200. This is Sanjay spicy hot stir fry marinade. It is also gluten free down to 180. So from 980 to 180, we go, we've taken quite a leap down. Um, the ice cream company is called Baravina um, Elados. Is it available in retail, in retail markets? Let me know, because that might be something that a lot of people would be interested in. If you are using soy sauce to show you soy sauce for just a tablespoon, 920 milligrams. So you know you're not just stopping at a tablespoon if you're using this. If you're a sushi eater, think about how much soy sauce you might be having, not to mention 
pickle ginger, wasabi, all to the moon in sodium. But as a great substitute, you might want to try at Whole Foods their Thai ginger marinade. So a good swap doesn't necessarily have to be low in calories. It can be low in sodium or low in saturated fat or added sugar. So this one will take you down to 180 milligrams of sodium versus the nine over 900 in the other, and it tastes amazing. If any of you using Thai ginger marinade, let me know. I use this not only... Um, you can use it in substitute for soy sauce if you're a sushi eater, but I use it to make my swordfish and then I broil it and it's amazing. What do I recommend when making salmon? Oh, hi, Richard. I love, so that's the dinner for us tonight. And I do it on the live stream night oftentimes because it takes so quick to make. So let me know if you have a microwave, because if you have a microwave, what I do is I take my piece of salmon, I put it on a plate, ready for this, no measuring. I drizzle with oil and I sprinkle with Trader Joe's has a seasoning called chili lime. So drizzle, sprinkle, you do, awesome. So drizzle with um, oil, sprinkle with chili lime, cover it with plastic wrap, leave one side open a little bit to vent, and in a microwave for two minutes, you will have perfectly cooked fish. The other thing I use for um, salmon when I'm grilling or perhaps I just wanna broil it, is this is also at Whole Foods. This is um, their mustard dill sauce amazing. It is delicious. It's very low in sodium at 75 milligrams. It tastes, I think it's, it's scrumptious. Um, my son says he doesn't love mustard, but he loves this and it is great. They have a bunch of marinades. I'm going to show you and I'm going to come back to you for the ice cream, but um, I want to just show you some of their, their marinades. I love to make fish tacos. I don't know if you guys make fish tacos, but I'll take salmon and I'll rub it with some seasoning and I'll put it in the oven. And then I will use um, their fish taco sauce. Now, just to show you, if I was to use, you wouldn't think necessarily that a flour versus a whole corn tortilla, you might think that it'd be a difference for um, the kind of carbohydrate it is, but because whole white flour is just a, it's like sugar. Um, but but if I was to have um, whole corn tortilla, I'm getting a whole grain. But the Mish, two Mission flour soft, that's the brand, uh, soft flour tortillas are 280 calories. If I switched it to two flour, uh, a corn, excuse me, from two soft flour to two corn, I go from 280 for the flour tortillas to the corn tortillas, two of them for 100. So I'm going to cut 180 calories and I get a whole grain versus having something made like sugar. So I'll have two corn tortillas. I'll put my salmon, my fish taco sauce, and a slaw, and I am good to go. I'm, you are not sure about the company's product availability. It's a startup. So hopefully they they have great success with it. Um, you got to taste several of the flavors, and they were all so good. So awesome. You'll Hopefully, you'll keep us informed as to the progress of that company as they make their product more available for us. Um, hi, Debbie. We use... The mustard dill all the time, and you love it, and also the fish taco sauce. Great recommendations. Hello, Barbara and Bill. I am so, so excited. You know, you guys, I have to tell you, are my favorites, all of you, so I am so excited to have you here on the live stream um, because it does give us a chance to reconnect. Mediterranean herb is another one of these marinades. I love these marinades at Whole Foods. I think they're doing a bang up job. And I can, you can use this with um, a, a milder fish like halibut or cod, people like haddock. It'd be a great one to put on and it'd be delicious. They also have, um, for more, a little more calories, but still low in sodium is, um, if you like a little kick, chipotle aioli is same kind, same line from Whole Foods. For this about 80 calories, still low in sodium is if you like a tartar sauce, their Cajun remoulade is a great substitute for tartar sauce. So um, these are all good choices. They're easy. They're already done. Any of you like, um, but I'm so glad these are helping you. It, uh, it, if you're like me, I am a pasta lover all the way. I love Italian food. It's one of my absolute favorites. So be mindful of a couple of things. Of course, be mindful of the pasta. So a whole wheat pasta for me is the way to go versus a white pasta. One behaves like sugar. The other will reduce inflammation throughout the, your body because it's a whole grain. Reduce the belly fat. Whole wheat pasta. My favorite, Delalo. 
Used to be at Whole Foods, no longer. Now I find it at Shaw's and at the Wegmans in Natick. So the Wegmans in Chestnut Hill didn't have it, but somebody told me that they get it at the Wegmans in Natick. So the Wegmans in Natick has Delalo whole wheat pasta. I get it at the Shaw's, but either, whichever you like. Many whole wheat pastas are great. It happens to be a brand that I just absolutely love the taste. And then the sauce, what are we putting on it? If you got a fettuccine Alfredo, you might as well have had in terms of fat, four pints of Breyers butter almond ice cream because you did the same thing. But instead, go for a marinara. So this is Yo Mama's Chianti wine. It is sold at Whole Foods and it is low in sodium and rich in flavor. They also, at Williams Sonoma, have a garlic, tomato, and Calabrian chili packed full of flavor. It gives you a little crunch. Uh, I mean, a little, a little punch. And... Um, and also low in sodium. So it's a great choice, and you might love this. 75 milligrams of sodium is very low for a serving of, of, um, of pasta sauce. To cut the calories even more, in, instead of whole wheat pasta, whole wheat pasta and white pasta have the same calories. The difference is one is whole grain, so it's high in fiber, antioxidants, phytonutrients, vitamins and minerals that are all protective. All of those things have been removed you get white pasta, but the calories remain the same. To lower the calories, go with things like zucchini noodles or any of these, these, um, these vegetable noodles. They are wonderful. Zucchini noodles, one cup is only 19 calories versus 200 in pasta. So you're saving a close to about a little over 180 calories and you still feel like you had pasta. If any of you are using any of these noodles, let me know. I think they're uh, they're phenomenal. And on that line of substituting veggies for higher calorie foods, cauliflower rice. I love it. Um, I use it all the time. I buy the frozen at, at, um, at Trader Joe's. They also have it frozen at Whole Foods. And their three quarters of a cup is 20 calories. If I get a cup, it's about 27 calories. If I had a cup of brown rice, it's 210. Both healthy choices. But if it's a calorie game and I need to watch my weight, go where you want to spend your calories. For me, I just as soon do it with cauliflower rice. I love brown rice. I totally love it. But I don't always need to have 210 calories a cup for brown rice. I can go with cauliflower rice and be just as happy. And what I put on the cauliflower rice is the Thai ginger marinade. And it gives it that kick, that punch. And I'll add some some chopped up red bell pepper for crunch. I'll add a whole egg to give it a little richness and some garlic and some onion. And I am happy, happy. Let me know if that sounds good to you because I totally love it. Let me know if any of these things are sounding good to you. I love that you like the marinades. I love that you want to know about how to make um, salmon because it's my gold star for fish is salmon because it has the most of the omega-3s. I also love peanut butter. Uh, let me know about you if you love peanut butter. Um, with pasta, is the portion size based on the dry uncooked? It will tell you on the package. So I always go... I look at the dry and cook, but I always like to see how much cooked because that's how I'm going to know. Um, so I always I, I look at the dry uncooked, Richard, when I want to know how much to put in the thing to make. But in my house, since I have both uh, my son and my husband here, um, I know that whatever I don't eat, they will totally take it up. Janice, sounds great. Yay, I'm so glad. Thanks so much for writing that in. That is wonderful. That's so such great feedback from all of you. So yeah, Richard, I would look at what they tell you um, to make what they're counting the portion is. They'll usually give it dry uncooked and then they'll also give it cooked. So I, I go by the dry and cooked to know how much to make, but then I always double check and measure it afterwards. A half a cup is a serving size for pasta, if you're carving carbohydrates it, uh, it, to match insulin, it's actually a third of a cup cooked is 15 grams of, of carbohydrate, white or, or wheat. But if you want to cut those calories significantly, then go with the zucchini noodles. Um, they're great. The summer squash noodles, I use those with the baby bell cheese and a variety of left cows to make sort of like a pasta and cheese. I add a little fresh garlic and onion to give it a little little substance and it's delish for much less fat and much less calories. So it's a great substitution and hearty and delicious and warm 
particularly on a cold night like these are, like we're having right now in Boston. I also love peanut butter. It's so funny that I love to cook. My mother wasn't much of a cook. She actually loved to read recipes. And then I think she got so tired after reading the recipes that she never made a thing. So her specialty, peanut butter and jelly. So I love peanut butter and jelly. I also love my mother and she'd be, she'd kill me if she heard me say this. So um, just know she was a wonderful, wonderful woman. Just cooking wasn't the strength. So to go along with my childhood favorite, peanut butter. PB2, love PB2. Think about this. Peanuts are fats. Fats are calories. Uh, if you follow the fat, you're going to follow the calories because fats give you twice as many calories per gram as do carbohydrates and protein. So 10 peanuts, 100 calories. If a little bit of peanuts gives me a lot of calories, a little bit of peanut butter would also do the same. This company, PB2, they took those peanuts, they ground them down to a powder and extracted a third of the fat. When you... Um, when you open up, hi, Helene, how are you? You find the zucchini noodles get too mushy. So here's what I do. I don't cook them very, very long at all, Helene. I take a little bit of oil and I, sa I slice a Vidalia onion very thin. And I saute that onion till it gets a little translucent. So not caramelized, just till it's translucent. I then add a minced garlic clove that I've minced up. You can add one or two, depending on how much garlic you like. And then throw in the noodles and your marinara sauce and doesn't need to cook long. Just like pasta, you can cook it to el, el dente. Some people like the zucchini noodles cooked a little more. They don't want it so with that bite. But if you don't, you're going to be done in no time. All you have to do is add the pasta. I mean, add the sauce and the noodles at the same time. And by the time one is uh, heated through, the other will be done and it won't get mushy. And they're unbelievable. So thank you for writing in. I'm so glad you're joining me on the live stream, Elaine. That is awesome. PB2, this is the powder. This is what it looks like when you open up the jar. And you might say, what the heck is that? Well, that's the powder that this company ground those peanuts down to. And then they took out a third of the fat. Take out what you'd like, add a little water. It will reconstitute and you will have peanut butter. But instead of 190 calories, you're going to go down to 60. You saved 130 calories. It tastes the same. It is a great calorie, heart healthy swap. If you want to have the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, my mother's specialty, then use Stonewall Kitchens jams and jellies. They happen to be naturally low in sugar. Or take um, a low sugar jam or no sugar jam from Smucker's. So either way, I happen to love the Stonewall Kitchen line. I think they're great out of Maine. And so I use their jams and jellies. Let me know what works for you. Um, oh, thank you. You're going to try it that way. Let me know what you think, Elaine. I'm, I'm so glad to have you joining me on the live stream and to write in. It's great. How about any of you? Do you like pizza? I happen to love pizza. So the issue is a couple of things, the calories because of the crust, the, the cheese, the oil. So let's take it all away. Make some heart healthy substitutions. Use Joseph's has a lavash, a flatbread. You can see on some of my previous um, cooking videos, you'll see me make this and then put Rayo's pizza sauce on. Happens to be, it isn't labeled low sodium, but it happens to be low in sodium. You can get it in almost any market except for Trader Joe's, but Whole Foods and your regular market will have Rayo's pizza sauce. Put it on top of your Joseph's lavash and then take that baby bell cheese. As you saw, it's a thick round. So cut it, turn it on its side and um, see how it's thick? Turn it on its side, cut it into thinner rounds so it will cook more evenly and scatter those rounds like rounds of mozzarella. The trick with this kind of a pizza is you have to cook it directly on your oven rack or on your toaster oven rack, 350 for about 10 minutes, and you're going to have a delicious flatbread pizza. If you like a thicker crust, Trader Joe's has a raw whole wheat pizza dough, and you could just roll it out to whatever thickness you like, and then you could do the Rails pizza sauce and the cheese. So um, let me know if you are a pizza lover and if that sounds good for you. So these are my yummy tips. A low sugar hot chocolate, coffee to be just coffee, the um, eggs or egg whites or egg beaters with a low fat cheese or just with chives, and then watching the bread, a whole wheat English muffin or a multigrain English muffin, or maybe Dave's killer breads, any variety. So whether it's a sweet version going with their raise the roof whole wheat raisin bread, 
or it's with their thin calorie power seed, then um, you're going to get more whole grains, 70 calories a slice versus close to 100 calories a slice. And you'll cut the calories. Spray it with spray butter, save 100 calories. Use laughing cow cheese instead of cream cheese. You just cut the saturated fat and therefore you cut the calories. And you can use yogurt in any place. The Faye tastes exactly like sour cream. Use it for many ways, either to top as a topping for a baked potato or as a dip or in place of cream cheese like Janice does. So all of these things are great substitutions. I hope you find them helpful. The popcorn instead of the chips, maybe make your own tortilla chips to get more for less. That's the trick because you want to stay satisfied and stay on track. So with the enlightened ice cream or popsicle or the uh, Irene's biscotti, these are all things that will help you to stay on track. The rice, the noodles made from um, vegetables and the rice made from cauliflower. These are all wonderful things to help you to stay on track. Hello, how are you, Amy? Just met you at MD. Oh, oh, I am so glad you're here and you're joining me today. That is really great. And, um, and I'm so glad you'll join me in two weeks again. So in two weeks, we're going to have another live stream. As you know, I do it every other week. And I'm happy to take suggestions on things that you like me to do a live stream on. Tonight was as a result of somebody asking me to do this almost every live stream, as you know. Oh, I'm so glad, Richard, that you've enjoyed this session. That really makes this really worthwhile to me. It makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing by continuing to do this. Um, as you know, I have to get to a 1,000 subscribers. So please let me know. If you have enjoyed this, definitely hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so and tell anybody you've ever met to do so because I need to get to a 1,000 so I can really start to cook with you um, and be a little bit more mobile. That would make it a little bit more, a little easier for me to do a little bit more with you. So I appreciate your support. I love having you here. The live stream, all of you have being here, your comments are really terrific. They have enriched this discussion and I so appreciate. So let me know if these things work for you, if um, they're helpful for you. In two weeks, we'll do another live stream. I'm looking for suggestions. One thought that somebody had suggested to me was how to boost your metabolic rate, that rate which you burn calories. So let me know if that's something that interests you. Um, but if there are no other, I, I hate to keep you too long. So um, you love Dave's Thin Bread, Susan. Hi, how are you? So I love Dave's Thin Bread too. It, uh, the name is a little off-putting, Dave's Killer Bread. But they are, I think he's got a great line. Now remember, not all Dave's breads, it's a great company, but not all his breads are good choices. Your mantra as with all of these things is read it before you eat it. But I'm so glad you're here and um, thank you for your time and caring so much for us. I totally do. You're welcome. Um, it is my greatest joy is to be with you guys and um, to help you to meet your goals. We're all in it together. So we're all trying to walk the walk. We all want to, you know, we all recognize the fact that this is Broadway, no dress rehearsals here, and we want to live longer. We want to live longer well, but it doesn't mean we have to sacrifice taste and the pleasure we get from food. Oh, hello, Adele. How are you? So thumbs up. I love it. Thank you so much. And thank you. A few more people hit that thumbs up button. And that really helps me to know how I'm doing. So, um, so I'm so thrilled that you've joined me. People from uh, that I've known from before and new people as well. This is what makes it great. If there are no other comments, I'm going to let you go for tonight because it's getting late for many of you. And I want you to make sure you have good sleep. That's important. And a good dinner if you haven't done so yet. And um, I will look forward to seeing you in two weeks on Dishing with the Dietitian. Thank you so much for really making this um, such a special night for me. And I, I'm glad it's, and hopefully, oh, thanks so much. Somebody else just hit the thumbs up button and that's huge. And, um, oh, you guys are really great. Thanks so much. Um, you will, thank you for, I will do my best and I'm so glad. Thank you guys for making this all possible. So um, I will look forward to seeing you in two weeks if I don't see you before. Have a great, um, healthy two weeks, and I look forward to seeing you on the next live stream. Enjoyed listening as I ate my butternut squash ravioli. Say, so I'm so glad I helped you um, to pass the time and make sure when you have your butternut squash ravioli that you look at what it's made from. So we'll work on that. Robert, make sure that that pasta is whole wheat pasta and that the butternut squash isn't with 
butter and sugar. Just, just saying. Um, so I love butternut squash. It's one of my favorites. And just so you know, butternut squash happens to be a little deceptive where one cup is only 80 calories. That's pretty good for butternut squash, don't you think? Love butternut squash. Um, so awesome. But I'm so glad you're enjoying. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so me too. I love the happy face. It is delish. And um, But take a look and see what's in it so that you make sure you're staying on track. Hi, Mary Ellen. How are you? Thumbs up. Oh, you're awesome. And if you hit the thumbs up logo here, that would be all so great. I so appreciate that. You guys, I'm just so happy to see so many people um, from before and so many new people. It really, um, it's really warmed my heart, to be honest with you. And I, I totally appreciate it. But I want to wish you guys all a great night and let me know if these things help. I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. If there are any suggestions that you'd like me to do a live stream on, definitely put them in the thing and um, you do my part. You definitely do your part. So um, you're awesome, Mary Ellen, as you all are. So thanks so much. I will see you later. Uh, I, oh, you don't have the thumbs up logo, Mary Ellen. Really? Oh, all right. Mine's at the top of the screen. So I don't, or the, for many people, it's at the bottom of the screen. Um, but thanks for doing it here. I totally appreciate it. And you are just great. So thanks so much, you guys. It's been wonderful to connect with you, um, tonight and to share with you your, what's helping you, your things that you shared with me. I, it's been most, most helpful. So, um, I hope I'm glad it's been the same for you. I will look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Have a great time, everybody. And, um, have yummy, healthy eats that stay, help you to stay on track. Thanks so much. Have a great night.